Uh, he's, I, I imagine he's got quite a bit of experience on this champion. It's not something like you've seen in another region, you lock it first time, no. Uh, this is a pick he's prepared and uh, he's ready to dominate. But it's exciting. It means the case of uh, perhaps a shift in the meta where mid lane isn't all about these control mages anymore. Perhaps an indication that melee bruises are coming back to really try and punish what can be done on the stage game. Let's load in for the only series of the night. It's a best of two between Mammoth still searching for their first point. Three games and three defeats. As for Grand Zero, looking for a little bit of stability, really. One win, one draw and one loss. A mixed bucket, but the clear favourites here tonight. It's not a yeah, and uh, you saw that purchase from the set. He actually went with Doran's Blade, which is very, very rare for sets. Uh, most of the time, uh, you do see the D shield come out because he's just so durable, just able to consistently keep tr keep taking short trades and, and heal up off the Doran's shield plus uh, second win. But he goes with the D blade. Uh, complete confidence pick. He's really thinking that he can dominate this lane and, and maybe even look for a solo kill. So talk to us about the early game and what is sort of your expectations that you're looking for um, to try and get this game started? Well, uh, whenever I see Tian cook up a counter picker to Udia, it seems that this is how it goes. Uh, <laughs> the Udia presses his old button and runs down whichever champion it is. Uh, so not the best start for top lane. Uh, I, I reckon Ground Zero should be looking for early trades and bot. They certainly Benvy. should be. Benvy completely undeterred. Two oh. man knock up. That's massive. Will they all in for that first blood? They certainly don't need to. The Ignite came out. The Ghost was there too. A lot of summoners burnt by either side. And Duck now has to completely rely on Pot as well as uh, the lifesteal weapon. Yeah, he does have the red gun, which is a bit of a bit of a saving grace for him, but not a good trade for bot side. You know, you've traded three quarters of your AD carries health for three quarters of the support, always going to uh, favor ground zero. Yeah, it just means that Benvy can be so aggressive right now. Lemus can determine really how this wave stacking is going to um, go about. And if you go out for a trade, it's just not one you're going to win. Big wave building. Thanks to really answer the question as to, with level three not too far away, do these junglers even look to try and gank a lane? Yeah, well, Guto did an interesting pass. It looks like he might be going for a level 3 bot gank uh, uh, with his clear because it's not very efficient. He kind of went Raptors, Krugs, then back to red. Now he's looking uh, maybe a transition gank mid. Uh, but it's quite dangerous because Yo in early levels, like I said, just loses this matchup. His HP pool is just worse. And yes, yeah, Sejuani coming for the gank. Looking for it. Flash available instantly wow. dashing out of that one. The Soul on Bounty still going for it. Double flash, make it happen. Face breaker. Passive stun. Goodo is going to try and do it all on He's his dead. own. And there it is. First blood at two minutes. That looked so messy. I mean, Yearn flashed forward without Q3, but. Still, they get the kill, and uh, excuse me, that is the Doran's Blade purchase from Kiste. If he had a D-Shield there, I'm confident he would still survive, but yeah, really tries to play to win the lane, gets ganked, and gets punished. Yeah, very aggressive in the laning phase, I suppose, uh, putting a massive beacon on the that come gank this lane. Gudo takes the advantage of it, says level 3 is there, why not? Great start for them, and certainly could um, make Dodging's life a little bit easier. Yeah, and uh, meanwhile, we see Shurnfire doing his full clear. Uh, perhaps he's going to get the, the double scuttle here as well for free, just at the cost of the Sejuani gank. Uh, so he's pretty happy with how the game's going. Uh, top lane, looks like Zax acquired a, a bit of a CS lead over Udyr, which is surprising, right? Considering we saw that early trade, a heavily favoring Nectar. So you'd expect him to, to kind of continue the domination of this lane, but maybe this counter pick has some juice to it. it certainly looks to be the case, right? So much sustain, to, despite how much pressure Nectar's putting out. May just simply be a case that Zach can uh, endure it all and um, yeah, really sort of look to try and shrug things off. Now, I'm curious as to how Shern looks to try and play things out as the brand, right? No need for an early gank, much like the uh, Sejuani is hunting for. Will it be a case, do you reckon, of him saying, well, the grubs aren't going to be up um, too far away now. I just need to rush towards that, keep farming, get level six uh, and get the haunting guys they step. Yeah, I think so. I think so, Skimmy. I think Shern just needs to do these bot camps as soon as possible um, so that he can get to the grubs on spawn and, and take that camp out, not risk uh, being sniped away by Sejuani because the thing is, Ooh. top lane, Nectar. Yeah, we've got to be really careful here for a second because that is going to be the pass of the Zac coming out to play. It's going to be a little bit out of range in terms of him looking for that fight. Double solo. We're running away all over the show right now as bot and top oh. fight, but Nectar gets the kill. <laughs> No doubt we'll get the replay. You can only imagine that as that final blob comes in, look how much is going to be denied. Yeah, I was so, uh, you know, I was so uncertain there because he did explode in the Zac passive right near the tower, right? So you just weren't sure, can Udia actually tank the tower and finish off the blobs before the respawn? Because if he can't, he actually doesn't have flash there, right? So there's actually a chance that Tien can maybe jump on him and, and, and get a solo kill back, but 
Uh, looks like he made it just at the nick of time, and uh, bot lane constant aggression from Denby on this Rakan, looking for opportunities on Duck One without a splash. Yeah, he's really going for it, right? Making sure that these summoners uh, are going to be one that work in their favor. And they can do it easier if the gank were to go their way. So Shern fight, still Good stuck on. in the jungle, still farming up in an absolute pace. Good. Look at the train keep him uh, at Lemp's Bay. Wow. Oh, look at that, Skimmy. They've got sub moves. Familia is first to this play. We've also got Top Prior with Udia. This is a should be a very mammoth favored play, and Shunfire kind of in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, Shun's gonna be really um, careful right now. He should just be dead. dead. Does yeah. good ult, but he doesn't even need to ult. He is just CC wow. with three members around him. A little bit baited in for the attraction of those void grubs, then completely collapsed on by mammoth. Yeah, I didn't see what happened to Benvi there, whether he was already bot lane or if he actually walked into bot side jungle. He was hovering around bot side river there, right? And uh, uh, if Shern wanted to contest the grubs, then, then Rakan needed to be there earlier. But a bit of a miscommunication, that's what we talk about, Ground Zero. Different ideas, different pages, maybe not uh, not working as, uh, as one unit. I'm going to tell you what, uh, you just saw the fan vote got before 92 to 8 in terms yeah. of Grand Zero winning this one. You look at the scoreboard and go, hang on a minute, this is not what was in the script. 3-0 in favor of Mammoth. Yeah, I just don't know why they, they don't ban Udia. There's just every game that, that Ground Zero played against Udia, the Udia went on to a, a tremendous gold lead, tremendous start. You know, I, I, I can't remember if they, if they won a game against it. I, I don't think, I think it's just 0-2, but... Uh, yeah, just just ban this champion. It just doesn't seem like there's a counter to it. Uh, it's a little bit too strong in my eyes, Gimme. So it seems to be the case, and I feel like players have been cooking up different answers, different ideas towards it, but um, you'd hate for it to become a bit of a running meme of just simply saying, lock in Udia, win the game, because nobody knows <laughs> how to beat it on stage. We really hope not, as uh, you do see that, despite Mammoth getting all those Void Grubs, uh, the first real sign of life and response from Grand Zero is to get the very first Dragon. But it's impressive. I mean, it's a one and a half K gold lead for Mammoth. And in the pre-show, we were highlighting how Ground Zero have the highest Baron percentage, you know, one of the highest Dragons percentage, the Rift and and the Grubs. But but this early game has uh, got Mammoth written all over it. Yeah, it certainly does. Let's see, though, if they can respect the amount of attention with members missing on the map. They do certainly back away from this one. Can speed that wave, can speed this turret play at the very bare minimum. As shown fire will also look to try and steer away at your jungle camps too. Now, good news in the area. That's going to take them both across the level six. And we'll see if much more comes off this play. Yeah, that was very risky by Shenfei here. Yeah, unless he had uh, exact position of Sejuani. If Sejuani was behind the bot lane there, he could have just been 1v3 collapsed. Then B and Lemus were a little bit too far away to help him, but uh, not to be in this game. Gets away with a, with a nice little camp steal, but if we just look at this CS skimmy, uh, Sejuani has got the exact same farm as Brand, which is not what you like to see if you're, if you're ground zero. Brand is a, is a flash farming jungler like Diana, like the Kane. Uh, should be getting a, a steady gold lead, a uh, steady PS lead throughout the game. Oh, here we go. There's the showstopper oh. and just slammed into the wall. Instant headbutt. And just gets a freebie. Just gets the solo bowler. Like, you just couldn't believe it. You're thinking, surely there's no way. He just goes for it. Yeah, I mean, I, um, he even caught me off guard, Skimmy, because it, it looked like he had a lot of health there, but suddenly about half his health uh, disappeared from the W, and then uh, the set all comes out. No way to flash that one, right? CC'd in the air, and gets the solo kill Kiste, proving that this, this counter pick is uh, worth investing into. It feels like such a long time since we last saw set mid. I almost want to say maybe all the way back to when Tally played it. A very mm. long time ago. I want to say almost like two years ago. It's been a been a hot minute, but it's exciting to see. And uh, it is finding its merit now. I mean, it all just initially starts off by saying, yeah, let's have a fight. We're not all inning, but they go for it. Yeah. Wow. So he actually dodged. He, he dodged his... Uh the Yon dodged the, the set W with his Q, Q3, but uh, still just loses. It's just the champion diff uh, with these items. Without Blade of the Rune King, Yon just cannot beat set. And you're thinking, sure, that first little jungle gank was enough to try and help things out here for the Yone, but not to be. Guess he's found his way back in, once again demonstrating that class. And I suppose back to your point of the uh, jungle comparison, is a bit of a worrying concern when a Sejuani is keeping pace. Um, certainly given that they went for the objective, went for that first gank, and it's all, um, all working in their favor. Yeah, not just keeping pace, Kimmy, but now ahead still has a camp to take, and Guru, uh, one of the veterans of this team, showing his class. Uh, Asta looking mid, uh, helping out Dajon a little bit in this lane. A little bit risky for going for this trade. Dajon feels confident because Milio's there, but there's also three other people around him. Yeah, everybody converging on mid lane. Last little fadeaway knock up there from Dajon, but really not looking for much more, but a bit of tickle damage at the very last second. You can see that Guru is just hiding in Fog of War right now, waiting to see if Grand Zero were to go for a dive. Ultimately says, well, the wave's crashing. 
I'll just hit them with a grand reveal and say it's your decision to respond to next. So if they've got this mid-tempo, do they look to try and utilize that to get the second spawning of these void grabs? Yeah, I think Mammoth really want to get their hands on, on those uh, that second spawn of Void Grubs, and especially because they only need two to get the full five, and Guru going in, misses the all. Yeah, complete air ball on that one, but a charm comes back from Dendi to try and turn this one around in their favor. Not to be successful, because he is the first one to fall. No more at this stage, but then the TP comes TP. out, and Shunfire keeps Guru locked in place. He'll flush the wall at the very last second, and he'll receive a shield from Aster, but can he run away? It doesn't seem too likely, because everybody's hot on his heels. But they'll say, we can't get you, we'll just get this instead. Yeah, but just look at the waves, Skimmy. Udia's catching top wave, Dodgen's happily catching mid, Aphelios is farming bot, bot wave and potentially even two plates. I think Mammoth are more than happy with getting a kill and getting uh, gold on their Aphelios, but a TP is coming in bot. Oh. Uh-oh, it's a backline TP for TN, but the observers are confused because so much action's happening at so many different places right now. Could TN do anything into Duck? It doesn't seem likely. Turns his attention to getting these minions instead, but then Venvi comes in and forces out the flash and doesn't let it go unpunished. Yeah, I think this is the second time that level one as well when uh, Duck1 got hit by the Rakan W uh, just because he ghosted very late. I think there as well, right? Ghost is a much lower cooldown ability. Just pop your ghost earlier. See if you can save your flash. Um, and, and just try and get away with Ghost on its own. Uh, not to be, ends up burning the Flash. It's a big cooldown gone against champions like uh, Zack and Rakan. You know, Flash is your only escape in these uh, river kind of skirmishes. Yeah, really important, obviously, to try and burn the one in the Aphelios with no mobility. And it can certainly get collapsed upon with little to no regard. You're looking at the potential oh. for a kill there in the mid lane, but Bajum just running out of steam as the soul gets ripped back into the mid lane. Yeah, and it seems to be just the Sejuani difference, right? In the 1v1, the Yone is losing, but once Guro is in the area, it's just so much easier for him to impact this 1v1 rather than Shurnfire. He's got a dash, he's got a long-range stun ultimate, and uh, yeah, Mammoth feeling strong enough to start the Dragon. Certainly are. Let's see if it continues at this kind of pace right now, because this is really upsetting the narrative we built around this game. We were expecting that Grand Zero to come in with a point to prove as the team that would dominate in the early game, and it's been anything but that right now. Yep, but um, um, it, is a, it is a Cloud Soul for, for Mammoth. So even though they're controlling the early game, the Soul is not a win con in itself. And uh, they're going to have to make some progress with these outer turrets if they want to accelerate the pace of the game. Well, let's see then if they can look to try and balloon things open as item spikes come on through. You've got Titanic Hydra in the mid lane now for Kissei. Shurnfire just picked up the completed Leandries. Massive moment for both those two to improve their damage, their clear speeds. Uh, and I suppose most importantly, the ability to try and rotate because they've been a little bit slow in the macro sense. It has been Mammoth uh, arriving to the play first and sort of initiating their own turns. Yeah, absolutely. I think Mammoth have been on point, uh, on point with the rotations. Really haven't lacked behind. This gold lead hasn't hasn't bled away. Uh, they've maintained this sort of steady one and a half, two k gold lead. And uh, we'll see what they decide to do with the lane assignments. I imagine that if you play Udia, here we go, uh, top play. Yeah, Darjun is just in trouble here. It's not going to get spotted because there's no vision in that top lane to protect him. It's just as simple as just saying, there is the showstopper. You are going to crash into the welcoming arms of a brand and uh, the Rakan. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Skimmy. I, I just think if you put Yone into this weak Zack, he's going to win that. And then potentially the Udia might have a better time into set. Uh, mid lane, Goro. Yeah, we just chucked out a few ultimates there, but the Feather Storm completely cancels out the Glacial Prison that Guru was hoping to uh, land. So nothing will cry from this one. There's no real trade back, and it just means that Grand Zero, for the first time, get a chance to uh, exert some side lane pressure of their own, resulting in the first tower. Yeah, we can't talk about anything else, Gimme, because there's just action all around the map. Top lane, <laughs> mid lane, uh, but ultimately mid lane, uh, Mammoth didn't get any gold, right? They just blew a... Uh, Blue one summoner, I think, and, and that was that. Whereas uh, top, uh, Kisei gets two waves, gets a kill, gets a tower. So massive outplay from uh, from ground zero, and, and now they're in the lead. And how crazy is it when you sort of look at the total gold that Kisei really is in a class of his own? One, one and a bit yeah. uh, thousand across anybody. He was the one that received that first blood, but he's come back and absolutely smashed that in the park. So now we approach the 15 minute mark with the game dead even. Grand Zero looking to say, well, what do we do towards this Herald? We'll give that one across, so Guru picks that one up. Did he go for the fight? They certainly oh, do. Dog. One man up from Dark oh. in, out, and he gets the kill. Brand is dead, no ult, no damage, no chance to cook them alive. But Nectar, he's taking on the bot lane of Grand Zero on his own, diving between two towers and leaving the rest of his team to take down Kise. Darjong fighting for his life, and he survives in the end. Wow, that is crazy, Skimmy. That looked so good for Ground Zero. They had two tanks on the backline of Mammoth. And it might not be over. Lemus uh, 
doing aggressive things as he always does. But yeah, that fight looked really good for Ground Zero. But uh, I'm not too sure how how they lost it because it it looked perfect for them. Shermfy gets exploded at the start. Let's see if he actually gets the ult off. Uh, Guro importantly doesn't have his ult, so Dajong initiates. And Shunfai does get his ult off, and Kiste gets this beautiful uh, two-man uh, W, but somehow this this uh, Zack and, and, and Yon combo is not able to win against all the squishies, and Nectar happily 1v2ing on the backside. So Mammoth uh, walking away with a, with a Rift Herald and uh, two kills. Yeah, going to be very happy about that one. And I think just uh, above all else was the control that Mammoth had in terms of zoning away the members of Grand Zero, forcing him to scatter to left and right. You saw Tien uh, at the top of your screen in that clip. He's just waiting, going, I don't know if I help you out here, Kiste. I think you're a bit of a done deal. As for the bot lane, right, obviously Lemus yet to get any kills, but he's got a bounty just from farming alone. Yeah, he does. So Lemus is just quietly doing uh, doing the work, uh, picking up all the minions everywhere he can. Uh, but we also have to look at Duck One, you know, just ha hasn't died this game at all. Uh, played a very stable game, has two kills, feeling very confident on the Aphelios. And uh, with the Udia being this fed, you know, Zack is forced to item uh, itemize magic resist, right? So in team fights, he's quite squishy to this Yone plus Aphelios uh, combo. Yeah, he certainly is. It's going to be a bit of a concern, that one for sure. If Duck gets given the freedom to not have to burn his flash or also get punished when that one is down. He has a whole bunch of damage, especially with the Milio in the backline there to buff. Now, Shurnfire sure looking towards the bot. So let me try and see if he can uh, take fight? a 1v1 into Nectar. He's going to keep him interested for the meantime, but in comes the TV to try and back things up, make it a bit more of an even fight. Darjung is here to shield for Nectar. Not seemingly enough, because in comes another TP, and then Darjung goes, hang on a minute, how have I been dived in a 1v4? Tries to hold out the safety, does not matter. Rip that soul back and send it to the graveyard. Yeah, that's the macro play coming in from Ground Zero, just having more people in the area. Um, able to get a kill plus a tower, of course, will lose their mid tower after committing so many resources, but I think they're happy without trading up. Certainly should be the case. You can see that if uh, Lemus had stuck around in that uh, area a little bit longer, there was always a Moonlight Vigil ready to try and land from Dark One. You'd imagine with these uh, items online already, would have been enough to try and find that execute. They're going to convert that pressure into the mid lane straight towards the second dragon for them, and I mean, ultimately. Uh, this feels like a brand new mammoth. Is it the case of a brand new player, yeah. or is this a, a new week, a new identity? I mean, I just, I don't know what to tell you, Skimmy. They, they look like a completely different team. Maybe it's, that's what Dajun told us. He said that, you know, he had to wait a little bit of time before Riot approved them and actually got him on the GCP and allowed him to play. And uh, he must have had quite a few scrim sets because this, this looks like a very polished uh, team on Mammoth. Yeah, it certainly does. They don't look at a place. It looks like the communication is on point. Okay, there's definitely been a few times where Dajun has been called out in those 1v4 situations. Here is that prime example. He's looking to try and um, bail out Nectar, but ultimately he gets out and then Grand Zero like, well, it's another freebie. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. This is, it's very confusing. Nectar doesn't actually commit his ult onto Shurn 5. He just does the double Phoenix. Uh, I, I think Shenfai gets chunked very hard there, but uh, he, he calls in Dajung for backup, but they, they've lost track of the support and the top lane of Ground Zero, and a uh, big surprise to them when they show up. Certainly was the case. Everybody grouping up in mid lane once again, looking to try and make something happen as a result. Looking to try and burn out the flash from the Aphelios, but it's not to be the case. Duck literally just hits them with a few water attacks and zones them back. So, unable to try and find any way to punish on this occasion, but mid lane seemingly the focus, and with Nectar having TP available, it's uh, game up for Ground Zero. Oh, here we go, Guru misses the ult, but yeah, not, not really sure what the fight is for. There's no objectives on either side. Skippy the Dragon's gone, the Ritz's gone, there's no Baron, so both teams just deciding to ARAM, uh, shake hands in ARAM and uh, dropping sideways for whatever reason, and Nectar's taking uh, full advantage of it. What do you think at this point in time is uh, best equipped to look to try and actually handle the Sudia? Because he's doing really whatever he pleases at this point. I'm not too sure, Skimmy. Uh, I, I guess you, you just want to match the set into him because the set does have the Blade of the Rune King. So yeah. um, uh, HP stacking Udia with Mercury Treads is, is going to struggle against that. But I really don't think there's a way to kill him, right? I, I just don't think you commit resources to that Udia. You just try and make a play on the mid wave, on Duck 1, on Asta, um, or perhaps even Dajung on the other side. It seems to be their, um, their real struggle at the moment, isn't it? They've been unable to try and punish the spot lane in Mammoth. And it's been able to freely scale up, get those kills, get that farm, most importantly, to hold that mid lane as strong as possible, deterring any kind of dives that could take place. So, really it's up to the likes of uh, both Nectar and Dajun to hold their own in uh, both top and bot. And similarly, the potential for a gank to happen. But Gudo has no ultimate, just burn it prior. So, just uh, warning shots here. 
Yeah, look at that from Benvy, recognizing that uh, Milia had no ultimate and uh, forcing out the flash from Duck One, and that's just a good fundamental league from, from Ground Zero, right? They see the enemy team is making a play bot side, and they immediately pull the trigger on mid. But that's what they've been hoping for all game long, hasn't it? Uh, they really mm. wanted to burn this flash from Nephilios. Finally, they have it, and now there are objectives to fight for. The Baron is up and available. The terrain is, I suppose, ideal to try and funnel all these members into place to make likes of a, a brand ultimate or even the Yone ultimate uh, find huge success. Yeah, and we finally see that that a CS lead starts to uh, accrue for for Shermfire. He's got 170 to to 130, uh, kind of what we expect, kind of what you have to do on brand to stay relevant. Because really, outside of damage, your uh, your champion offers very little else. So in terms of the brand, um, it kind of me intrigued because I've not seen too much of it in competitive. But uh, by the late game point, are you very much a, a, a laner? Would you say in terms of you're farming up, you're taking as much of this as you can compared to say other players on your team? Oh yeah, I'd say you're probably even stronger than some of the laners and uh, the good thing about Brand, Gimme, is that you just need to toss out your abilities and then you, you're happy to die uh, because everything's still bouncing and a lot of these fights, the Brand might die and his ult's still going to do five, four, six, uh, four, five, six more bounces in the team fight and uh, yeah, I think Brand is definitely a late game champion and uh, going to have a lot of success uh, uh, for Shenfire in this game. Let's see then if the positioning is favorable for him to then find that full rotation of uh, CDs into insane AP burst. Currently waiting in the wings, looking to try and see if anybody steps up to the wave. Uh -oh. And Duck lands right in the position. He flashed, he bounces, and he says, well, Duck, you've got nothing. I've missed the mark, but we'll guarantee this kill. That's the big shutdown. It goes the way of Lemus. And do they now go for the turret into Baron? Yeah, really big question now for Mammoth. Look at that. That's their only blue trinket dead, Skimmy. So uh, if Ground Zero start this Baron, uh, Team Mammoth will have to walk in blind. Not a good look for them, but they're going to take that gamble. They're going to see what they can get accomplished with this at the moment. They're trying. They certainly are. You see they're trying to zone them back for the meantime. Taking on two is... Uh, Keeps them back. The Baron is always going to be a bit of a bait. Bit of a dance. As Darshan drops down low. In slingshots here. Look to try and hit those flappy hands. But another flash goes out from Good Oak. And uh, the respawn of Duck makes their plans get deterred. Yeah, I think uh, Ground Zero were never really intending on finishing the Baron there. It was always about the turn. You could see from Tien's positioning, uh, ready to pull the trigger as soon as somebody steps over the line. And uh, Mammoth lose all of their flashes, only Dudgeon with a flash remaining. So all of these objectives are just so hard to retake for them now. Who Who's going to be the first person in? The, even the Sejuani that walks in to a brand stun, to a set stun, to a uh, Rakan knock-up. Oh, Goodo starting the Baron. Very cheeky. Yeah, this is very confident from Mammoth, isn't it? The fact that they feel that they have enough in the tank to try and force the fight. There is no cleanse from Demilio. This could be a bit of an issue right now. Out jumps Gudo once again, forcing a bit of a bait on this Baron. It's down to 50%, but they're not giving up just yet. Daljung already flung himself back into the pit. That clone is not available. And then Nectar takes the gamble. He fights into Benvi, surrounded by five members. The Udyr will finally fall on down. Oh. Out goes the Moonlight Vigil. It doesn't find the success it was hoping for. But there is the face of it. Slam them down and let them burn to the brand. There is two for him, two for Lemus, and Ground Zero have finally woken up. Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a great fight for Ground Zero. It's all those flashes coming in. The flash cap uh, for Mammoth, really hard to execute this kind of a fight against Zack, against these uh, hard engaged champions when you don't have the flash available to yourself. And uh, we saw, I think, Guro try to Q over the wall to engage, but completely missed it on Rakan. And, and after that, there's really no follow-up, right? The Yonol is impossible to lead with, and, and Udia was still bot lane. So uh, it felt like Mammoth really had no way to pull the trigger um, off that Baron. No, and we're just watching this wild goose chase. So can we catch Demilio in? I think, yeah, Lemus wow. has lost interest. They've let him get away, but let's <laughs> run it back with his Baron clip. Yeah. So Darjan goes over the wall to try and check that that close bush. Now he's on full cooldown, and and so does Gudo. They really missed both of their engage opportunities. They have to just leave. Nectar needs to uh, not go forward here. There needs to be clear comms from his laners that there's no play. Uh, retreat, guys. It's not our Baron, and uh, they they kind of commit to a lost cause. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of downhill from here. No flashes, no way to, to really get out. Yeah, a little bit disjointed, unfortunately. All the ultimates not coming together as cleanly as I'm sure they would have envisioned. And Grand Zero, hot to pounce, hot to punish, and ready to take control of this game once again. Up by 5,000 gold, two dragons apiece to a sole point, not looking too likely, but it is Grand Zero of a Baron and uh, attacking two lanes at once. Yeah, we have to say, great itemization from Kiste as well. Picks up the Random Zomen, very high value, two crit champs, very little magic damage. 
Uh, the fight's happening, Skimmy. It certainly is. Nixon jumps in straight away. Out goes that uh, fake through the trans function from the back line. As he flings back, they do in fact get that shutdown. So Brandon's dead for 40 seconds. But it's a one for one so far as Lemus answers back, taking down their jungler as well. So still, you feel like Grand Zero. Uh, are undeterred the fact that they Dark. can still keep pushing on forward. They can get more structures. They can continue to fight. And the fo the, the Moonlight Vigil doesn't even kill Benvy. It's going to take him down. And that final Graviton from a million miles away comes into effect. Duck surely falls on down. And it's the feathers of all things that get it done. Yeah, that was uh, flashing forward on the AD carry to get us the poor kill. That was a very questionable decision making, right? Because he's not going to have those available to him. Uh, next fight does get 300 gold in his pocket, but I wonder if it was worth it. Um, at least uh, they stopped the siege, right? There should be no inhibitors going down. Uh, Mammoth did a good job uh, sort of stopping the bleeding, uh, stabilizing the game. That was a great time to pull the trigger, right? They've set a line and uh, they didn't let Ground Zero cross it without paying a price. Well, yeah, you're right in that regard. They've they've not lost as many structures as they would have anticipated otherwise. But it is still five towers to two. We'll run it back initially because it is just a case of, well, we're pushing mid and bot. Let's command this jungle and see what you can do. Yeah, so a bit unlucky there on Gudo. doesn't land his ult onto Shermfire. Shern's able to flash out. And like we said, he just throws out all his cooldowns. Yes, sure, he dies afterwards, but he's done so much damage that uh, the fight already feels one for ground zero. And then duck one, mate. The tower's gone, buddy. You just just give it up. It's all good. Uh, tries to get a solo kill onto Bambi. Uh, walks backwards, walks back in. Really greedy. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's not, not worth it, but maybe it's good for his mental. He does get a kill on the board. And that's, uh, that's the end of it. He would have felt so close to getting away from that one. He thought, ah, oh, just that pesky, uh, <laughs> pesky Zaya ultimate. Oh, he's burnt that. He's he's vulnerable, guys. Get him down. But it wasn't to be. The fight was already gone by that point. Fancy feet from both Dojung and Benvi. It's not going to deter this uh, top lane tower from falling down, making it tower number six acquired here by Grand Zero. And this map is getting bigger and bigger and easier for the likes of a set and so on to flank from now. Yeah, and it's shrinking for Mammoth. And, and the item disparity is starting to come into play. We've got... Uh, a full item lead, even more full item plus the F sword on the Zaya, um, as well as the full item lead on the set. So uh, I'm struggling to see where, w w what's the window uh, for for Mammoth. I think the items won't won't make any difference. It just has to come down to flashes, right? Shenfei no flash right now. Perfect fight opportunity. Uh oh, it's the face check. One it should never do, and they have paid the ultimate price. Brand has given them a bit of a uh, a welcome package, and give them 30 seconds to reflect. <laughs> I mean, it was a very good uh, place to fight, right? The Ground Zero only had three people in the area. Ben V. Lemus very far away, but Asta just walks in first, doesn't let Gudo tank, and Gudo. Gudo's gone for the ultimate, it's onto Ben V. Doesn't really matter because he still managed to turn things around with the charm, the knock up, and absolute CC Kingdom. They lose nobody, but they're taking everybody. Gudo flashing, baiting, and really breaking the ankles off the Zac, but it doesn't matter because all they wanted was the inhibitor, and that's what they'll get in the mid lane. Oh, I think he'll get two inhibitors here, Skimmy, and uh, the damage just seems overwhelming. Sejuani, not enough to tank uh, the, the squishies once the, the Ground Zero carries get access on them, die instantly, and Ground Zero want to end the game. But they certainly do. It is the dying moments of this game. Do MMF have anything left in the tank to try and prevent this one from falling on Dan in 28 minutes? It took a bit of time for Ground Zero to come into this one, but ultimately when they found the momentum, they've never shown any signs of slowing down. Nectar 1v4! This is the power of Udia! CC immune, damage out of control. Ultimately, it's a godlike Zaya. It doesn't matter. Seven kills for Lemus this game. That champion Dajong. too strong, but Dajong with his last breath gets a two-man ultimate, a double kill for the mental, but it won't change the outcome. It's Grand Zero that win game one.